Stephen Schwartzman has given £150 million to Oxford University, the largest contribution in its 800-year history. The Blackstone Group head has emerged as a major philanthropist with donations to the New York Public Library, MIT and Yale. He's also close to President Donald Trump and a little bit of a scholar when it comes to China. Well, I'm very pleased to be welcoming on Bloomberg Surveillance the Blackstone Group chief executive here in London. He is Stephen Schwartzman. Steve, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for coming in. Now, this is basically a, a faculty, a hub that brings the humanities faculties to tackle ethical questions on artificial intelligence. But who's it up to to figure out how we regulate this so that we don't displace too many workers? Right. Well, it's, it's, it's more than that. Uh, for, first of all, it's bringing together the humanities faculties where Oxford is uh, ranked number one in the world uh, and they've never been together. It's all been separate buildings and now it's going to be combined so they can get the advantage of cross-disciplinary uh, kinds of stuff. Uh, we're going to have a major performing arts center uh, and uh, th that'll enable certain themes in the humanities to get played out. Uh, and then uh, as I was learning about what Oxford was doing, I realized that their capabilities in humanities and philosophy in particular played right into uh, my concerns uh, about what happens when you introduce AI uh, globally uh, and what happens to the displacement of workers, uh, all kinds of other, you know, uh, unexpected consequences. And, and, and so using the Oxford uh, core of Western civilization mm -hmm. to figure out what's human as you make decisions of what should be actually implemented is, is I think, the second piece uh, beyond just the technical. But Steve Schwartzman, the, the politicians no longer listen to the academics. They no longer listen to, to the global elite. Why would they listen to anyone coming from Oxford? Well, I think the reason is that in this intersection between technology, about which governments know uh, pretty much next to nothing, uh, and, and, and the real world, where workers uh, can be adversely affected, which changes how society works and, and, and can change political things, that it's important to have somebody who's an arbitrator, if you will, mm -hmm. who can make recommendations to, to government, uh, who, who have knowledge uh, and, and broach uh, the, the two areas. Uh, that they're naturals to do this. J just leaving this to government, as we can see in the United States, uh, with just the simple issue of privacy, is, is quite difficult. What are the questions that you would ask about AI right now? There's so many concerns about how certain countries, including China, for example, process the data and use the data to profile possibly a lot of their citizens. Well, that's China's right. Uh, and the West has a different set of core values. So, so one of the things, Francine, is we're going to be running into this issue of what really are our core values that we care about uh, and other, other societies uh, with different cultures, they'll do things differently. And we, we can't make them do what our values are and, and vice versa. 